This week on Dirt Porter Duramax, we're going to make child chairs out of old five gallon pails. We all heard the story about the guy that changed a paper clip all the way up to a house. Now there's a girl doing it from a bobby pin to a house. She's up to a hot dog cart stamp now, which actually interests me because I like hot dogs. I like making money. But her, but her videos seemed more like an advertisement than progress. We are closing up the boxes and locking up the shop. I'm gonna go for dirt pour and Duramax. For this, we found some old five-gallon pails at the car wash. That we're going to use. I went down to the local store and bought a keyhole saw for $9.48. To start we're going to remove the lids. Some lids have pull tabs at the bottom so that they can be pulled and then just pry it off. These do not so we're going to cut about every six inches which is about a hand finger to thumb length. around the pail. When cutting the lid off, remember to cut up and down so that you're not actually cutting into the pail. Once we've got our cuts made, we just reach in between the cuts and pry the lid off, up in each section. <laughs> giving us an open pail. One down, three more to go. It's very important to clean out all residue that was in the pail. I'm lucky that this one was cleaning solution, so some water and some rags will work. We're just using some old clothes we had around the house that we were gonna just garbage for rags, and we're gonna clean it up. For this, we're going to put our palm on the handle and just draw a circle, curving our hand on the handle. <coughs> All the way around. Again, finding a position where your lines are going to mark up, line up, and do it again in the other direction. We'll do the same on both sides. Once you have both sides done, you can use a piece of wire linked to the bottom to draw a straight line along the bottom. Before cutting, you might want to straighten out any imperfections you can see before the cuts are done. Now that we've got our lines all drawn out and marked, it's time to cut. When cutting, you're going to want to take your time cutting around these slips to show that so that the cuts go all the way through and are nice and round. Whether you're using a keyhole saw like I am for these videos, or using a jigsaw, you can just want to take your time and move slowly. Once we've got a cut, we can use our cut piece, out piece for a pattern if we're going to make multiples. Use a knife to cut all burrs off the Ends. For this next part, I picked up a file for 1553. I want to go along and make all these edges round so that there's no sharp edges for kids to cut themselves on. Now that we've made, got all the edges rounded, even the corners of the buckets, 
vial down to the corners so that they're not sharp and we'll cut anybody. To start making our seat, we found a piece of plywood that um, at a construction site that was just scrap. So we're going to draw on the outside of the pail, leaving enough room just outside the pail. Now that we've got our line drawn, we're going to want to make sure that we cut inside our line to make it fit inside the pail properly. Now that we got the hole cut out using our keyhole saw, if you have a jigsaw, all these cuts would be so much easier and faster. But for these videos, we're doing what we can with what we can. We can see that it slips right in there, falls in. Now we've got to find some cushions. It did not use, take long using our social media to find an old couch that somebody was throwing away. We had to dispose of the couch, but we got the cushions. We're going to pl place our piece of wood flat on the material and then use our hand again. Sticking our knuckle where our finger bends. And our marker on our fingertip and go around the material. Again, we will have to fix any imperfections. But we have our circle drawn around our seat. We're going to cut it out with our handy utility knife. Now that we've got our material cut out bigger than the pad for our seat, we're going to take the pad off, take some stuffing out of the cushion that we've got, and add it to the on top of the seat cover. We'll start with just a couple of handfuls, placing the board back on top. Might have to add to level it out. But once we've got it nice and level, we can start by grabbing some of the material, giving it a little twist in between our fingers, and then stapling it to the wood. You're going to want to go from your staple, another finger length, and do the same thing. Give a little twist, and then staple. Once you get closer to the end, you can flip it over, take a look at your cushion, and add more if you feel the need to add more. Now that we got our cushion built, and it fits in there fairly snugly, we want to make something so that the cushion doesn't fall all the way to the bottom. For this part, we've got some scrap pieces of 1x4 that we're going to cut up and use. We're going to start by cutting two pieces. This is the size of the inside of the pail. They don't have to be perfect. But these will be parts that will be unseen. Once you got your two pieces cut, you're going to want to notch out about halfway through each one so that they both look like this. You're going to cut out this section on each one. Once we've got our two notches, we're going to cut out two pieces to fit together like a cross. And then set it at the bottom of the bucket to help hold the seat up into place. Now that we got both of them built, we can put them on social media and see what, how we make out. We posted our mini chairs on Facebook for $25, see if they sell or not. But this will give us time to get back to sleep. With buying our file, keyhole saw, and stapler, we sure did bring down our total quite a bit. But we managed to get some copper stripped and took the bottles in, which brought us up to $128. We're still sitting on the chairs because they did not sell.